towards the middle of this talk, you're going to start to hate me. You see, I talk with strangers, and I will tell you how, and towards the end of this talk, you too will talk with strangers. So what's so great about talking with strangers? Think about this. Information is the basis of our civilization. We talk, we write, we sing, we paint, we color, we draw. This is how we share thoughts, ideas, experiences. This is how we build our past and plan for the future. The depth of our civilization is this corpus of knowledge. The, the breadth, the richness of our civilization is our willingness to reach out and talk with strangers. It's the people on the other side of the mountain. It's the nations down the river, across the oceans, across the continents. It's our willingness to talk with strangers and to connect. And those connections together weave this exquisite tapestry that we call civilization. Now, every so often in history, there's a person who's privy to the entire span of a technology and who affects it. Today, John Pershing comes to mind. John Pershing, born in 1860, joins the US Army when they were chasing cowboys and Indians on horseback. John Pershing goes on to become a general, commands the US forces in Europe in World War I, and dies in 1948. Think about this. He spanned the technology of warfare. He joined the army when they were fighting like we fought for thousands of years on horseback with bows and arrows. He saw the gun, the tank, the jeep, the airplane, the carrier, and died in 1948 having seen the atom bomb. Spanned the technology. And I too have been very fortunate to have spanned the technology, the technology of talking with strangers. And have played a very modest role and it's my story I'm going to share with you today and leave you with a question. It started when I was in grade school in my school in Columbia. The teacher walked into class one day and said, who would like to have a pen pal? And I said, what is a pen pal? And she said, you'll be writing to someone in the US. And I said, whom? And she said, a stranger. A stranger? Yes, I want to be a pen pal. And so every month or so, we sit in class and write in ink, in impeccable penmanship, this letter to a stranger. Fold it neatly, place it in an envelope, address the envelope correctly, put the stamp and mail it. John Pershing on horseback carrying a letter. What did the letter say? I don't care. When you're talking with strangers, content does not matter. It's connecting that matters. Half a century later, Tom and Connie asked me, do I remember that person's name? I said, no, it was a stranger. But to this day, I remember the address vividly. 77 Valentine Avenue, Kingston, New York, a total stranger. A few years later, I was in junior high school, a chain letter arrived. Now, the chain letter had an opening paragraph which promised the person who followed the instructions of the chain letter happiness, wealth, success, good looks, everything you could imagine. Second paragraph, woe unto she who did not follow the instructions. <laughs> you would not believe what would happen to you. Now, the chain letter had 10 names and addresses. I had to send a postcard to the person at the top of the list total stranger. Then I had to copy the letter 10 times by hand. We did not have copying machines. Remove the top name off the list, add my name and address at the bottom, and send it. I went through my parents' phone book, and I looked for the most distant relatives we had to send these letters to. Because here's what I reasoned. If I send 10 letters, and these 10 people send 10 letters, that's 100 letters, and those 100 people send 10 letters, you get it. I was expecting to get a room full of postcards. <laughs> 10 times 10 times 10, 10 to the 10th, 10 with 10 zeros of postcards from total strangers. This was like John Pershing 
getting on an airplane and sending letters around the world. Well, <laughs> this is embarrassing to say, but someone broke the chain. Someone did not follow the instructions. Someone did not mail the postcards. Fact of the matter, I got two postcards that year, and I think one was from my aunt in Milan wishing me a happy birthday. <laughs> it doesn't matter. When you're talking with strangers, content does not matter. It's connecting. And so life went on, and years later, in the 1990s, something new came. It was called the Internet. And so two friends and I decided, wow, we should write an Internet site. And I sat down and I wrote in hard code HTML, hard coded a site called La TV. La TV was supposed to bring in media from Latin America. It was organized by country. And you could click here and read a newspaper from Buenos Aires, click there, get a magazine from Mexico, click here, a journal from Bolivia. Not only that, brand new, we had radio on the internet. This was the start of the internet. You could listen to radio from across the world on our site. And on top of that, in some instances, if you clicked, you get television broadcasts. Okay. In all fairness, the quality was dubious, the image was this big, but it didn't matter. We were bringing news, and at this point, one of the partners, Danielle, who was in the audience and is on the screen, had a stroke of genius. Danielle says, you know what? Let's create a news site. We will create the news. We create this company called Mundo IT. We will create the news, and we will send it. Send it to whom? Think about this. Now you may start to hate me, and I'll tell you why. We were one of the pioneers of a, I want to be tactful. Let's call this a software. Let's call this a, a robot. And what this robot would do was, let me give you an example. Every night at 6.30 in the evening, we would feed our robot, our software, a website. In this case, I've used University of the Andes in Bogota. We would feed it this website. This was the start of the internet. And this software would crawl through this site, okay, really. And it would go into the back of the site, into the source code. And it would start looking for the at signs. The at signs are email addresses and the software would accumulate all the email addresses on this site. And then it would look for the HTTPs and the source code because HTTP referred this site to the next one. And our software would jump to the next page and accumulate all those little email addresses one by one. And we'd come into the office in the morning and we'd have roughly, let's say, 2,000 email addresses every day. Now, we would sit there by hand every day and filter out the garbage. We had, for example, names without the at signs, at signs without domains, domains and at signs without names, garbage. We had .gov and .mio. Listen, when, when you're talking with strangers, steer clear of government and military. <laughs> Advice, okay, just between us. Okay, so now we had roughly a thousand sites. And here is when you can really hate me. Around 10 in the morning, we would send a short news clip to these email addresses. Roughly 250 would just bounce back. Domain unknown, mailbox full, return to sender, whatever. It doesn't matter when you're talking to strangers, it doesn't matter, okay? Roughly 500 ignored us. Just ignored us, had nothing to do, no problem. 50 of these would send us extremely angry emails. They'd say, how dare you send unwanted stuff on the internet, don't you know? The internet is for serious things only. <laughs> Little did they know what was gonna happen. But some 200 people would write back. You know, I liked your news article. Can I learn more? Can I subscribe 
to Mundo IT. I like what you have to say. Or such garbage and nonsense. Are you guys stupid? It doesn't matter when you're talking to strangers. Don't take things personally. We had connected with 200 people. John Pershing on jet plane. Think about this. From horseback pen pal to chain letter on an airplane, this was a jet plane. What was the value of this connection, these 200 that we would get every day? We were approached by a very prestigious print magazine. And uh, they said, well, this stack of emails you have, pennies. But these names that you had connected with, a dollar or two apiece, the value of a connection, monetary value. We were starting to span a new change in technology. Now I'm gonna use the word among friends freely. We were spamming ourselves, okay? <laughs> among friends we know what I'm talking about. But it turns out we are spamming the universe. Every television broadcast, every radio broadcast that goes into the air goes out into outer space forever and ever and ever in every direction. In 1977, NASA launched two spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And the Voyager mission was to go to Jupiter and to Saturn to take pictures, to take data, and transmit it to Earth. And then using the gravity from Jupiter and Saturn to be flung out into outer space, John Pershing goes intersolar. And Dr. Carl Sagan had an idea. Let's attach two gold records to each spacecraft. Gold record, gold does not corrode. On the front of the record, we will etch a man and a woman and the solar system, the hydrogen atom. We'll include a record player, and on the back of the record, NASA recorded greetings in 55 languages of the Earth. Music, Bach, Beethoven, the Beatles, all sorts of music. The sounds of the Earth, wind and rain and thunder, and animals and bears and tigers and ants and bees, and the sounds that we make, kissing, laughing, Drills, jets, the sounds of the earth, because maybe millions of years from now, millions of miles, someone, someone out there might pick this up. We were reaching out and trying to connect with a stranger. Three years ago, I was walking down the halls of MIT, my alma mater, and I walked into the breakfast of the physics department. And the speaker was Dr. Sarah Seeger. Dr. Seeger is a professor of physics at MIT. She's a professor of earth and planetary sciences at MIT. And today I'm very happy and very proud to share with you that last year she was a recipient of a MacArthur Genius Grant Award. Dr. Seeger uses very high precision optics, telescopes, high power math, a pinch of common sense and a pinch of intuition to look at distant stars. And she looks for the dimming and brightening and dimming and brightening that might signal a planet going around that star. John Pershing has gone intergalactic. Think about this. Dr. Seeger is like Columbus and Marco Polo, except that she's exploring outside our solar system. Her technology has allowed scientists to find over a thousand exoplanets, planets outside our solar system, 5,000 more candidates. And it dawned on me that what Dr. Seeger does is what I do. Remember how I told you that I used to look for the at signs, signs of email addresses, and filter out the garbage and the nonsense, and have a few candidates every day? Dr. Seeger does the same thing. She looks for the at sign. She looks for the dimming of the stars, the sign of planets, throws away the noise and the garbage, and is left with nuggets that are exoplanets. John Pershing has gone intergalactic. Outer space. We've spanned space. But think about this. Is somebody spamming us? This is an exciting moment to think. Is somebody spamming us? Well, NASA set up this enormous radio telescope in Arecibo, Puerto Rico is the world's largest single aperture telescope, and it listens for signals from outer space. 
And the amount of data this produces is enormous. So there are thousands of us volunteers around the world who have volunteered our idle computer time. When I'm at work, at sleep, eating, giving a TED talk, computers at home that analyze the data from NASA looking for patterns is somebody spamming us. Remember what your mother's told you about talking with strangers? Suppose somebody is spamming us. Well, what do we do? Do we answer or not? Suppose they found the cure for cancer, for hearing loss, for um, problems that we don't even know exist. Or suppose it's a civilization out to destroy us. What should we do? I want you to think about that when you walk out today. Should we talk back? Is someone out there? This is the ultimate frontier. That is the ultimate stranger. Do you want to make that connection? But I promised you a happier ending. You received ping pong balls and pencils. And what I want you to do now is each one of you write your email address on that ping pong ball. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Write clearly, please. Write your name on that ping pong ball. Okay? Now, what you're going to do on the count of three is you're going to toss that ping pong ball so high, as high as you can. Grab the first one you can, and tonight send an email to that person saying, hello, stranger, we connected at TED. Ready? One, two, three, go! <laughs> Thank you very much, strangers. Thank you very much.